hey, welcome to this show. You know, many live streamers today struggle to get views on their videos. And the people that do show up, well, they don't really tend to stick around very long. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's because there are seven big factors that every successful live stream show needs to include. And when you start adding these seven factors to your live streams, you're gonna notice that you're getting a lot more views and that the people that stick around, stick around a whole lot longer. So today I'm gonna go through all of those seven factors with you. I have PowerPoint examples. It's gonna be a big show today. Stick around, it's stream like you mean it. Hey, welcome back to Stream Like You Mean It, where I, Owen Video, help you, the video creator and entrepreneur, create more effective, more engaging live stream shows. Give me an air five for by typing five into the comments below. That's how we say hello. And we are broadcasting today on multiple channels all around the web, thanks to our software sponsor restream.io the best live streaming studio you're ever going to need we want to welcome you our live and replay audience watching us right now on facebook youtube linkedin and periscope hey my question for you today is why did you start live streaming i really love to know i'd love to hear from you in the comment area right now why did you get into the game of live streaming because i know for me I got involved in live streaming so that I could sort of be more authentic, right? Like I, you know, with pre-recorded video, there's all these different things you have to kind of like worry about, you know what I mean? But with live streaming, I could just, you know, press record on my video or press, press live and, and go out and give my message to the world and do it in a way that was like satisfactory for me, you know, where I could be my true self or at least you know, bits and pieces of my true self, I think is something to, to think about. So I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Why did you start live streaming? And while you're typing in that, I want to give a big shout out to our software and technology sponsor, Restream.io, phenomenal live streaming software, and you need to take a look. With Restream.io, you can broadcast your message on multiple social media platforms at the same time. And with the new Restream Studio, you can go live with custom branded graphics, a chat room that pulls all your conversations into one place, and many more features. So get started today on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and more. Just visit owenvideo.com slash Restream to get your free trial today. All right, that's right, guys. We love Restream.io. And whether you're a new or an advanced streamer, careful, we're fixing lights while we're live. And even if you're an advanced streamer, Restream.io has all the easy to use capabilities if you're brand new and you just want to start streaming. But even if you're a little bit more experienced and you want to do some major things, Restream has some pretty phenomenal capabilities as well. I'm going to uh, rearrange some of our uh, windows here and I want to say what's up to Mr. Lee Sensei of Psychology Tips who says, I do live streaming for fun and to make a living. Well, I think that's a great way to, uh, uh, to do it. I want to say what's up to... Uh, Victor Manuel, hey, it's great to see you today. Uh, he says, I am here. Good to have you here. James Pruitt said, uh, I started streaming because I love the ability to talk directly to people and answer their questions directly. I do too. I really love just kind of like being one on one with you. Uh, our good buddy Carlos Zapata says, My son wanted to do gaming live streams. My kids watch gaming live streams constantly, and I actually really encourage it, even though I'm not like a big sort of like, watch video games all day long i like them to see the difference between like a gamer's perception of the game and then them actually playing the game to understand that all media is controlled so i love that you're doing that and then of course uh we've got carlos phoenix who says it was 1997 and no one knew how to do it so we built a million dollar studio been doing it ever since and guys if you want to follow an expert in the space be sure to follow carlos phoenix he does some really great stuff aaron garcia my man logging in for my brother from another mother let me tell you i got started with aaron garcia back in the day so it's really great to uh to have you here we've got the causal nerd jason who was saying i started streaming uh because i loved morning show radio as a kid and it was my favorite and that was something i love to do look uh, same way 
I love radio and I love radio. I was a media major in college. So you studied the history of media from like, you know, flat, like literally flags, like, you know, it's they're called semaphores, you know, this kind of stuff. And people would signal each other right from like rampart to rampart and began with that. And then the telegraph and then the telephone and the fax machine and all this other kind of great stuff. So radio always excited and encouraged me as a kid. And I loved, uh, I loved what they had to do there. We got lead with Jim is in the house. Good to see you here. My good friend, Lily tree is watching us today. And let's see, uh, uh, Mr. Lee says, I think chatting live stream is the way to go now for new streamers. Game live streaming is very saturated. I, I do not, I do not argue with you. You have to be very, very good. And our old friend, Zach talks tech is in the house. Zach. So glad that you're here. Well, we have got a great show for you today, folks. We wanted to line up something that would act as, as a real sort of tutorial for how to create a live stream show that people will actually watch. And we've identified seven of the biggest factors in creating a successful stream that is not just a stream you do once, but a recurring show. And this is how you need to think about your live stream. You need to think about your live stream in terms of a show and it's recurring and it has basically the same look and feel so that your audience can expect, they know what to expect from you and they enjoy watching you do what you do. So today we're going to go through seven big factors that every single uh, one of your live stream shows needs to have. And then I'm going to give away my document that we use to organize our shows and it functions like a checklist. So the next time that you go to prepare for your live stream show, you just go down the checklist. And if you do that, you're going to have a very successful show. So we're going to go through that today. And I really hope that you enjoyed this content. I'm going to be flipping around the screens a little bit today. And I wanted to start with step number one, which is you need to have a show name and a value statement. Okay. You need to have a show name and a value statement. So what does that mean below? Well, you need to have a memorable name that includes what you do in it. So for example, my show is called stream like you mean it, right? And that you, you know, you kind of know what the show's about, right? Then we have a value statement that correlates to it so that when I'm talking about my show to people, they know what the heck I'm talking about. Okay, so our value statement is, uh, welcome to Stream Like You Mean It, where I, O, and video help you, the video creator, create more effective, more engaging live stream shows. And if you notice, my hand motions are actually pretty much the same every time I, I say it as well. And that helps to create that consistency. It helps to create that relationship that people crave and they wanna see from you. Okay, so the biggest problem that I see from live streamers is there, there, there's like a nebulous name, sort of like, in fact, we were just discussing this in, in my client group uh, where I, I coach entrepreneurs and, and business owners in, in video and YouTube and live streaming. And one of our members had said, you know, the name of my show is like happy and free. And I said, well, what's the show about? And she said, well, it's about my approach to life and how I look at life, you know, through this particular lens. And I, I thought, you know, well, that's, that's wonderful for you, but what does that actually mean to the viewers who are watching you? You know, and the fact of the matter is, um, it, it does it. People don't know what you're talking about. So I want to hear from you guys right now in the comment area. What is the name of your show? And if you don't have one, I would love for you to put, uh, uh, you know, I don't have one. You know, maybe it's like maybe it's like the Aaron Garcia show, which Aaron, I know that's not the name of your show. I know that you have a real name to your show, right? But I want to show you guys a a method for coming up with a great uh, name and a great tagline. Okay, so this is actually the tagline uh, feature right here. So if you follow this process, you'll have a great tagline for your show, and it's today I'm going to show you X so that you can achieve Y and finally experience Z. Okay, so take a screenshot of that or, or maybe just write it down somewhere so that you can remember it. But if you write that down and you follow that process, well, 
then now you're going to have a system that sounds like this. Okay. So let's say that your show is called, let's see, let me see some of the name, uh, the names of your shows. So Aaron Garcia's show is called manifestation mindset. Okay. So you might do something like this where you go, welcome to manifestation mindset, where we help entrepreneurs get in the right mindset to grow their business, right? It might be something like that. Today, I'm going to show you X. Hey, today I'm going to show business owners how to improve your mindset so that you can get more sales and finally experience the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Okay, you guys with me on that? So by following this template, when people ask you or you're at networking conferences or Zoom networking meetings and people go, oh, you're live streaming, what's your show about? You can say, uh, my show is called InfoSec Unplugged. And I show, you know, entrepreneurs how to use tech more effectively so that they can live happier lives, right? But you see what we're doing there? It's like, I'm going to show you a hardcore skill. And I would even replace you with like demographic, right? I say live streamers, right? So today I'm going to show you, today I'm going to show live streamers how to create more effective live stream shows so that you can make more money and grow as an entrepreneur. Okay. So what questions do you guys have for this? You need to have a name and a value statement that's really concrete. It should identify the demographic that you want to watch your videos. Because like here at Newsflash, you don't really want your grandma um, watching your, your videos, right? At the end of the day, you really don't want grandma watching your videos. You want your core demographic watching your videos because grandma will log in for a second right? And then she'll log off because she just wanted to say hi and support you. You know, but really what happens is that watch time kills it. It kills it for you. And so you want people logging in that are actually going to stick around for a long time. Okay. So we got a lot of people logging in right now. We've got the psychic podcast guy. We got Antoine D. Brown, Patricia Media, James Pruitt, and lots of great people logging in. Aaron Avila is finally logged in. Great to see you, Aaron. And we'll come back and forth in between these, you know, as we continue. But I do want to make sure that we move on to step number two, again, probably going to surprise you, but step number two is that you need to have assets and artwork. Okay. Assets and artwork. Now inside of my company, we have a different name for this. We call them video branding elements. And I'll show you what video branding elements are in just a minute. But now that you have a show title and a value statement, it's time to create a few simple graphics that you can fit into your show to create a visually inviting and a visually stunning show. Now, the biggest problem that I see with entrepreneurs with this kind of content is that you're all using sort of the same templates that you can buy on Facebook or you, know, you kind of have the same Fiverr guy making everybody's graphics the same. I want to warn against this tremendously because for those of you that grew up in video, right, like I did, I remember when iMovie came out and I can still to this day recognize any video that was made with iMovie. Okay, if you made your video with iMovie, I can recognize it. You know why? Because all the graphics are the same, all the templates are the same. And what you need to do is create some template graphics, graphics that um, only you have. Okay. And there's lots of ways that you can do this. Uh, we offer a product at our company called video branding elements, but you can also go to your own editor or you can go to Fiverr. The trick is this. The trick is to give them your logo and to give them your brand colors and then have him make or her make a collection of services. Okay. A collection of services that, um, uh, uh excuse me, a collection of, of elements that you can use all at the same time. So let's take a look at some of the, the graphics that we recommend or that, you know, just as examples to kind of show you. Okay, so what you're looking at here at the bottom of your screen is called a lower third. And a lower third appears on the lower one third of the screen, just like you're seeing right here. And you'll notice that we have my logo on the left-hand side with a red bar that says repurpose your live stream. Now, this is actually from another stream on another channel, my private channel, which many of you might be watching on right now. 
but we have the title of the show in the red area. And then underneath we have any kind of label. So it's like my name right there. But I might also have like a tip or a question there, a tip number one or step number one or whatever the case might be. The, the thing I wanna show you is that this is branded to me and it only looks you know, like, like my brand looks. Now here's, here's another stellar uh, video branding element or, or asset and artwork that you might really like. And this is called a half screen graphic. And this graphic sort of appears on screen and you guys have kind of seen me using this today already. You've already seen me kind of split the screen and, and, and use half screen graphics, but this really helps to break up the scenery. But what I love most about it is that when you're, when you put text on the screen, now you're asking your viewers to engage with their minds and with their eyeballs, right? So when somebody is reading the text on the screen, they are not Xing out of your video. And so I would love to see you guys, you know, coming up with sort of a strategy where you can put more text on the screen. I mean, look at what we did with our background graphic today. I did this intentionally, by the way, because normally it just has my logo on it. And I thought, you know, if I put more words on it, then as this video appears in the news feed, more people are gonna sort of stop for a second or two longer. And maybe I could turn non-views into views on Facebook. And maybe I could even turn some of those into longtime fans and friends of the show, right? So adding text, uh, I think is a, a very valuable tool and something that you should look at. Okay, another example of a video branding element is a transition. You can look at how this is a very, this is, now, obviously, like this is a moving graphic, okay? But we didn't, we couldn't make it move in the PowerPoint. So I just want you guys to notice that. But this graphic is actually a transition and it helps to tell the story of what I'm, uh, of what I'm working on. Now, let me actually put up for you on the screen a live example of one so you can get a better look, uh, a better uh, sense of what we're talking about. Okay, and so you were able to see how that graphic sort of, you know, comes on the screen and then at the end of it, it takes too long, but at the end of it, it, it animates off and then that gives you, you know, just this really dynamic branded look and feel uh, to your show that I think every creator really needs to see. Now, as I mentioned before, there's a variety of places that you can go to get your video branding elements made, but I'm gonna put a link into the chat area right now where you can go take a look at our custom video branding elements and see if that's something that you wanna get created for your live stream show. So let me hear from you over there and we will continue with our presentation. Now, if you have any questions, please be sure to ask me in the comment area I'm keeping an eye on our time, so I wanna be moving through this content, but I also wanna uh, spend time with your questions and Carlos is in the question area, ready to help us out with all of that. So I hope you guys notice that I'm moving the screens and stuff around, which is just another really cool feature of uh, this software of Restream.io. Okay, so step three, now you have the name and the value statement for your show. You have some custom artwork to put on your show, okay? And now it's time for step three. Let's get your video creation station in line. Now, a video creation station is a very simple three-step setup that can be put in a place where the microphone, the camera, the light doesn't need to be put away because you don't want to be in a place where you've got to like get all your gear out and then put all your gear away. And this is one of the biggest problems that I see, you know, with um, uh, with live streamers today is that you're kind of like putting everything away and then when it comes time to stream, you gotta like get everything out again. This wastes your very valuable, very needed time and emotional energy. You know, I, I was in a business where um, I, I used to set up and and strike, set up and tear down a video studio that was mobile. So we had rented office space, you know, in this building out in San Diego, California, just this big empty room. But then our goal, what we would do is we would sell clients our video services. And I would take all of my lights, put them in my car, go set them up in this big empty room. So when they come and they, they see, it looks like a video studio, right? And then after they were gone, I would load it all up in my car, take it all back, put it in my garage, rinse and repeat every single day. Well, this, absolutely 
wore me out. It absolutely wore me out. And it's going to wear you out too. So with the video creation station, you should be in a place where you can go live at any given moment and your studio is all ready to go. Now I'm going to show you what my video creation station looks like right here. Keep it in, keeping in mind that I, I know that not everybody can do this, but I do want you to know that I am only using about half of a bedroom, not even half of a bedroom. I'm not even using half of a bedroom, okay? And the TV back there kind of looks like a fancy tool, but keep in mind, I bought that at Costco, you know, for like 200 bucks. It's very, and the reason why is because I didn't want to have a messy background all the time. Okay, but you'll notice I've got my computer there. I've switched to a PC recently for higher quality live streams. I've got my microphone there, and I want to show you my microphone. So you see my microphone right here. I can move this, right? And now it's out of the way where I can do Zoom calls and I don't always have to use high quality audio. But I'm in a place where I can move this stuff out of the way and just kind of, but it stays on the desk, you see. I don't have to put it in the closet. I don't have to unplug the cords every time. Everything is set up. Uh, to keep things moving all the time. Now, I've got my uh, LED ring light there. I highly recommend an LED ring light. In fact, I'm going to show you the gear um, that I recommend. And I'm using a camcorder because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I can afford it, right? Like camcorders are phenomenal live stream tools. And the reason uh, that they are live stream tools is because they never burn out and they broadcast in 4K. But not everybody can use a, a camcorder. And so I want to share with you uh, the big tools that we recommend for creating a video creation station. So the first is the Logitech Brio 4K webcam. In fact, let me see if I can uh, pop myself uh, onto the screen here for a second. I can. There we go. Um, oh, you know what I can do? I can actually do do this. Now, here's, here's what I love about the Logitech Brio. This is a 4K webcam that plugs directly into USB. So you don't need an Elgato cam link and you don't need a video card. All you have to do is plug this directly into your computer and boom, you're broadcasting in 4K. You can even get on a Mac or a PC an app called webcam settings and dial in your settings. You can zoom out, you can zoom in, you can change the color temperature a little bit. You can of course do all those things with your light as well, but this is a great, you know, a great tool to, uh, to have. Now, the next tool that we recommend is an LED light kit. And we're going to be putting the links to this, you know, in the comment area below. But you can always go to Amazon.com slash shop slash Owen video. And Carlos, you might want to just put that link in the description box because at that link, you can buy this into everything that I'm, I'm showing you right now. So the thing about this LED light kit is it comes with the Bluetooth remote control. And I can't stress enough, guys, you got to you gotta use remote controls because sitting down and then walking to the side of your desk and sitting down and walking to the side of your desk can be overwhelming. And so you want to make sure um, that you're, you're not doing that, right? That you're, you, you can turn it on and off with, the blue, with, a, with a, a Bluetooth. But it also comes with these white and orange um, uh, uh, lenses that that sort of, that go on top of the light that help you change the color temperature and really give you that rich look that you're looking for. Now, as a case in point today, it is like the beginning of winter where I live and we haven't seen the sunlight in like 21 days. I kid you not. But my skin kind of looks, it looks colorful because I'm using the orange filters on the light so I don't look as pasty you know, and ghostly as I might look in real life. And I think that's better for the live stream viewers. Okay, the next piece of equipment that I want to recommend to you is the ATR2100X microphone. Now, this is different than the ATR2100. This is a very excellent, high-quality microphone that plugs in via, via, who says via, who says via? Uh, I think I'm more of a via guy, but you know that when it feels right, you just say via. You know what I'm saying? So that's my story for you today. But the ATR2100X is a sleek, slimline black microphone that plugs in with a USB or an XLR cable. Now, an XLR cable is sort of like that traditional microphone cable that you might have seen at like your community center or at the church. You know, it plugs in like a real, you know, clunky sort of microphone. But here's the thing. The XLR adapter 
means that this mic can also not only plug into your computer with a USB, but it can also be plugged into a soundboard or a mixer or a karaoke board. So you can use this mic for any of the other community activities that you might be engaged in and know that it's going to give you this high quality, this high quality audio. So would love to hear from you guys on that is creating a video creation station so that you're in a place from now on to really just just get up and go you know and that's the place that i really want to see you guys in is this place where you are ready to stream at even a moment's notice okay let's go back to the comments and see what's happening in the chat room it's so did i see my man roger wakefield is in the group want to say what's up to our uh, buddy Roger Wakefield, always good to see you, my friend. And he's saying that it is 70 degrees in Texas. Is it 70 degrees under the house where the chocolate milk is flowing like Willy Wonka? I'll tell you, Roger posted a video the other day uh, that absolutely blew my mind uh, about chocolate milk. So if you guys want to see some interesting stuff, you got to follow him. Uh, we've got uh, Launchpad is asking, how far north are you? I'm in the Salt Lake City area. And uh, even though we're sort of in the valley, uh, we get a lot of icy weather without the snow. So Lottie, Lottie freaking da. Uh, Aaron Garcia is asking, does the ring light work well with the two-person setup? I would say the ring light is going to work best for you in a, in a two-person setup. Now, ideally, I would have you spend 120 bucks because the lights are only 60 and that fluctuates, you know, on Amazon. Ideally, I would have you spend 120 and get two lights and have them on both of you. But if that's not an option, what I would do is, is yes, I would put the ring light sort of in the middle and just sort of adjust it till you get that, that good, nice glow that you're looking for. What I would not do is I would not get one of these box lights, okay? These lights that are that they take up so much room and they have like six or seven light bulbs in them. Because look, even if that's an LED, those light bulbs will break. And and I've had many. I still have some in the garage. The light bulbs will break, but also the light the light bulb sockets will become loose, and you might get flickering wires, or you know, which causes like a blinking in your video. But there's also like a like you might get feedback in your headphones so i like when the electricity and the light isn't perfect i actually can get like zzz, 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 you know sort of in my microphone and that's something that you've got to be um you've got to be uh really really careful of so i'm just looking at we got it my man savvy bg is logging in um he says i bought a ring light after two years and I was mad at why I didn't buy this thing earlier. I totally get it. it makes perfect sense. And you know what? Um, at, the, at the same token, you guys have to go watch Savvy BG's channel on YouTube. It's Your Indian Abroad. He has like this nighttime talk show, interviews people on the street. It's really a well put together show. It's something I think we could all learn from. Uh, Heather Michelle is saying, I have that one and it worked for my video introduction. I'm glad to hear it. I know that things are working and i love to see that we've got um one more question from jim who says um should we add sounds and different things to our show well you know a lot of people think sound effects are really fancy as i'm trying to play sound effects and the window just isn't working isn't that phenomenal i did a test this morning and everything was working before the stream but then as soon as we go live uh the sound effects aren't working so Ooh. there we go hello there we are we got it <laughs> so yeah you know i i like having sound effects but i will tell you this that the sound effects can be sort of more of a problem than you think because it's all you're moving your hands in so many different directions and you really want to kind of watch out for you know being like more entertaining than like you're spending too much time driving the ship than actually engaging with with your audience and i think that that can be um something to 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 it makes me feel really good i don't give a rat's behind what you feel see See what I did there? So yeah, I really like the use of sound effects and whatnot, but I also would rather that you guys are focusing on great content because at the end of the day, I don't think anyone's really gonna be like, oh, uh, your sound effects were were really amazing. 
uh, but I hated the show. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't see that happening. Last question is uh, from Big Boy Gaming. Hey, what's up, Big Boy? Uh, is thoughts on USB microphones? Uh, well, I recommend a USB microphone. Okay, so that's what I actually recommend for you is just getting a USB microphone so that you're always, always, always plugged in. Now, over time, if you want to get something a little bit more saucy, then by all means, you can do that. But I want you to make sure that you're you're actually like crafting in your game before you're moving on to this thing of of becoming like an extra special talented type of of person. Okay, which I mean, I know that you all are, but you get it like. You should be working on really great content and not focusing so much on your tech up front, dialing the show in, getting your show to where it's second nature. And I'm going to show you this big step in doing that. We're going to kind of bust through the rest of these. But this big step, having an ROS, a run-up show, and I'm going to show you what that is right now. You guys need to get one now. You need to start using it now. An ROS is like a checklist for your show. And it's like, be sure to do this. 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 And when you have that, then every single show doesn't skip a beat. You know, people are excited to hear and see from you. Now, once that part is in line, yeah, get a better mic, get a better light, start using sound effects. But I think it's really important that you dial in your show uh, first and foremost. Okay, so let's move on. Let's keep going as we dig into step number four, which is set up your broadcast studio. Now, as you guys know, you cannot go live from your desktop you know, to YouTube or from your desktop to Facebook Live. I mean, you, you kind of can, like the technology is available, but you can't like go back and forth between webcam and screen share. So you absolutely will need a third-party software that you stream into so that you can multicast on multiple platforms, so that you can share your screens, so that you can upload additional videos and have a well structured show. So you need a powerful live streaming software like the one that we're using right now. And we recommend restream.io and you can get a free trial of restream at owenvideo.com slash restream. Now here's why we love to use restream. Okay. Because restream gives you the capability of streaming simultaneously on multiple platforms. So take a look at this as of right now, we are live on LinkedIn, two different YouTube channels, two different Facebook channels. We are live on my Facebook group, I think even another Facebook group, and a Periscope channel. It's like seven channels all simultaneously. We're streaming on all of these channels. You cannot do this without software, and Restream makes it easy. Now, if you were to get expensive software that does this, you could do it. But you also then need a really fast computer. Whereas with Restream, you don't really need a fast computer. All you need is one good live streaming computer, uh, which is you know, an off-the-shelf Mac or a PC with, you know, uh, I would definitely get some sort of upgraded PC. I definitely wouldn't get, you know, like your off-the-shelf PC. But then you can stream on all of the major platforms, and there's a total of 256 platforms you can stream from. But that's not the only reason I like Restream. I also love the graphics and the video overlays that they give you the option to use here. Now, they'll provide you with a bunch of, of graphic, like template options, but you can also upload your own assets and artwork, which we talked about in the very beginning of this show. So I love that feature as well. With Restream, you can dial in your framing. You can have a custom background. You can change up the way that your set looks. You also have a consolidated chat area where you can, you know, uh, talk to all your friends. So for example, as we're all, man, it's like, it keeps switching up on me. As we're having this conversation right now, you know, I'm able to see all of the chat area, you know, sort of light up and I can talk to you, whether you're Mama Z, fully involved, Carlos Apeda, Roger Wakefield, all of you are sort of watching on different platforms and I can see that but I can answer you all in one easy to access consolidated chat area. So you've got to have a, re, like you've got to have a broadcast studio. And I see a couple of you are saying, I use this software, I use that software. There are tons of softwares out there. When I started, there was none, right? There was none that, so we were all trying to do it like ourselves. Like I was streaming like with multiple computers and trying to make it all work with screen shares and stuff like that. And luckily the technology caught up to us. So there's a variety of different softwares that you can, um, use out there. However, Restream, I have found to broadcast in the highest quality 
with the most reliability means every time you press the button, it just friggin works. And I absolutely love that. Okay, let's move on uh, to step five in this process, which is you need to have a weekly schedule. And this is again, an other area where I see you know, live streamers really, really struggling because going live is all about building an audience online and you can't build an audience if nobody knows when you're gonna be live streaming again, okay? And the, the, the rationale for that is this, is I don't know when I'm gonna have time, so I go live whenever I can. How many of you follow that, that model? How many of you guys are following that model? I don't know when I can go live, so I go live whenever I want. Well, I would actually encourage you not to do that because I think you're doing more harm than good. Now, keep in mind, I have developed some of the biggest live stream shows ever to hit the social media marketplace two years in a row. My live streams were announced at the keynote speak at Social Media Marketing World as having an industry standard of what a live stream should be like. I have produced probably close to 100 live stream shows between myself and my clients, and we have done a lot of this stuff. And it simply doesn't work to go live whenever you want. What I would rather that you do is that when you're when you're gonna go live, right, in these sporadic times, I would rather have you go through these seven steps and start planning and preparing for your next live stream show. See, a live stream show is is a customer generating brand building tool. So you don't do a live stream show whenever you can. To the contrary, you build your schedule around a live stream schedule. And so what I want you to do is imagine a builder, right? Imagine like a contractor, he's building a, bil he's building a building. But what he does is he lays a brick down in a hundred different places instead of putting those hundred bricks in the same place. Can you imagine what type of foundation that would build? You got one brick over here, one brick over there, one brick over there. No, 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 it works for me right? But it's not about you. It's about the person that's going to stand on that foundation. That's your customer. That's your client. That's your subscriber. And so what you want to do is stop going live according to your own schedule because it makes it hard for people to follow your content. Instead, what you want to do is go live every week on the same day and at the same time. Now, how many of you guys would struggle with that? Okay, I, I would love to, to hear from you. So I'm hearing it already a little bit. It says, uh, uh, yeah, I'm so bad at that. I get it. I get it. No judgment from me, by the way. Uh, guilty, V love, and crystals. And then we have kind of a cool Zach Talks tag. I have a two-day schedule adding uh, more soon. Amanda Walsh is saying, you know, great tip. I really love your honesty, guys, and, and love that we're all having this conversation together. Now, here's Aaron Garcia, who has been through a couple of my programs, who says, you know, we go live every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Pacific on YouTube. See, I, I absolutely love that. That is where you guys need to be. Pick a day and pick a time every single week where you go live. Now, here's the thing. You might miss a week, right? You might miss a week, and that's okay. It's okay to be imperfect, we're all imperfect. But set it up in your calendar so that you're in a place where you know this is my live stream time. That's what we go live on this channel every Monday at 12 p.m. And at 11 a.m., Carlos and I, the producer, are going through the show and we're rehearsing. And so we're getting ready for the live. And so our whole week, our whole workflow is built around this Monday live stream. And so I wanna see you guys really, um, uh, preparing yourselves with a a monthly uh, a monthly live stream. So let's see. We have one more comment in there from a new friend, uh, Robert Chapel. Good to see you. He says, "Yep, we go live at the same time, and it works. I love it." Pfft. So glad that you're here. Thanks for sharing that wonderful feedback. Wait, we got another great comment. Oh, I can't move on yet as I'm like dipping my head above uh, the noise here. It says, "I struggled at first. Let's see what it says. I struggled at first, but I realized it did more harm than good for both the stream." and creating other types of discoverable content. So now I'm doing streams around a schedule, even if I'm streaming less. Well, that is incredible. So I love to hear that I'm sharing with you guys, you know, tips that are actually bringing value to your life. So step number five is to create a weekly schedule. And I want you to think about like, you know, Monday through Sunday, doesn't matter to me. Like go, people ask, when's the best time to go live? And there's two answers to that. Number one is when you can. So that's the first thing you should look for. When can you go live? 
and then just go live there at that time. Well, oh, and I can only go live Mondays at 9 p.m. Okay, well, then do that. There's a billion people on Facebook. You're telling me that, that there's not a hundred of your audience online at that time? There are, and they'll absolutely watch your show. Now, if you go live for six weeks, 12 weeks, and you hit a plateau, well, then maybe, maybe, you know, maybe change the time of your show. So the, the best time to stream is when you can. The second best time to stream is when your audience is online. And that's kind of hard to know, right? Because there are these different concentrations. YouTube gives you a sense of when your audience is online if you've been uploading to YouTube long enough. But otherwise, you, you know, you have to kind of like take that into consideration. Like, when would you make sales calls? Or when would you do prospecting? For me, I actually cut out Chamber of Commerce meetings because I wasn't getting any bit. This is when I first started. I wasn't getting any business there. So I was like, you know what? Instead of going to these networking events where I don't, we don't meet anybody, I'm going to start going live and creating a body of work. And you know what? That was absolutely the best move I made that year. So I want you guys to think about when you can uh, when you can go live. And that brings us to step six. You need to create a calendar link, okay? And this calendar link, this is designed specifically for interview shows, okay? So if you have a show where you wanna interview people, I think it's a wonderful idea. In fact, we've interviewed a ton of people on this show and, uh, and on different shows that we've done. And we've kind of developed sort of a sometimes we interview, sometimes we don't. And I think you should work that into your, your, you know, your weekly schedule. For example, you know, if you want to do a thing where like the first and third week of the month, you stream just talking head, but then second and fourth, you stream with a guest, very, very, very effective. But here's the big problem that I see live streamers, you know, struggling with is this, this whole like, Hey, do you, do you want to come on my show? Sure. When do you want to do that? Uh, how's Wednesday at two? Uh, I can't do that. How's Tuesday at four? Uh, I can't do that. How's Friday at one? Well, I can't do that. That's, that's the thing that I hate. And I absolutely will not play that game. People will invite me on their shows and it's like, dude, send me a calendar link. Okay. And you can make a calendar link in a variety, with a variety of different tools. I'm going to show you a tool that we really love, but, um, scheduling people can be hard and it's even harder to schedule big guests if your system is wonky and broken. Okay, so we recommend a software called Vesita. And Vesita, what that is, is a, is a easy to use software that you can create a custom calendar link and set up that link so that you can your guest can only schedule a, a, an appointment during the time of your live stream. So if you go live every Monday at 9 a.m., then you set up your calendar link so that when it goes out, they can only pick, you know, Mondays at 9 a.m. Guys, following this process, I was able to schedule guests for like up to 12 weeks in advance for one of the past shows that we did. And it made it super easy. And plus, this is a look at one of the links we use in our own company. It's not actually for a live stream show, which is why you could see so many throughout the week. But this is for our like interview calls. Like somebody wants to become a member, or become a client. We we talk to them first because we don't accept everybody, unfortunately. Like we do need to have a certain type of person in our in our group. But that person can only schedule in one or uh, two spots of that day. Okay, so I want you guys to look at, now again, there are lots of free calendar systems that you can get out there. We recommend this one. We recommend Vesita because it has all the tools that you need and it's the same price as probably the most popular tool uh, that you're thinking of. It's called Vesita. We put a link into the comment area right now and it's VC. I T A. I know it's kind of a strange name, but you can get that link there. It's get Vesita now. We've got that in the um, in the chat room right now. Thank you, Carlos, for uh, for sharing that. Now I see um, um, uh, Javier is is learning a Javier is learning a. Uh, excuse me, I got lots coming in today. Javier is using a different calendar system, but he's still using one. And Liberty side, I do not see your question. Please forgive us, man. They're coming in really fast, so I'm doing the best I can. Um, 
looks like you've got a, a question right here. I want to get to it. So uh, Liberty side is saying, what uncensored streaming services on Restream besides DLive can I use to stream? There are over 256 different uh, platforms that you can stream to with Restream. And I am an expert in a handful of them, but I am by no means an expert in all of them. What I would recommend that you do is go down to the Restream, go to ovenvideo.com slash Restream. And then from there, click through to the menu and you can see all the different platforms that we're streaming to and you know like with the like with the 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 modifier of uncensored that can obviously uh mean a lot of different things like does that mean youtube or does it not mean youtube i assume that you are uh meaning youtube because it is it is a censored site um but what i would do is i would go and look at the list of 256 and pick out the um um uh, the platforms that are best for you okay and we're ready to wrap up the show today with tip Number seven, who's ready? Ladies and gentlemen, you need to use a run of show. That's right. You need to absolutely need to use a run of show. Now, we've gotten a lot of great comments in here today. Like, oh, and thank you for the tips. Oh, and these are great tips. Thank you so much. And I appreciate that. Thank you. We put a lot of time into this show. And we wanted to make sort of like a definitive guide for, for uh, you know, this year and beyond on what you need to start a live stream show. Because I think so many times we talk about like platforms and cameras, but it's like, how do you actually construct the show? You know what I mean? So that you're not boring people to tears. Well, that's what we wanted to do today. And I think that we need to see the most important thing. I've given you guys like a bunch of tips but you can put all of those tips together by using an ROS. Now an ROS is a systematic way of running your live show that eliminates the, fr the fluff and moves the show from beginning to end without losing any viewers. The reason you guys lose viewers is because you didn't open strong enough. There was dead air in between your segments. You didn't have any segments. And you didn't change up the scenery, right? Like you guys notice how I've been kind of like, you know, changing up the scenery all day, kind of moving things around, keeps the show interesting. At least I hope it keeps the show uh, interesting. Marissa Kelly is saying the ROS is so key. And Lil Lily Tree, who has been a part of our community for some time, says, where have I heard that before? Let me tell you. That's so funny. I got I to gotta show you costume code. She says, my husband keeps yelling out questions to me about Owen's presentation. I'm glad you're listening, sir. Thank you for your support. I'm glad that you're here, and I'm here to answer as many questions uh, as I can. And Liberty Side, you are welcome. And I'm probably saying your name wrong, but um, I, I do like the, uh, the Libertas sort of prefix there. I'd love to know more about the channel if you get a chance. Now, let's take a look a little bit at what, what an ROS looks like. So an ROS is really it's a document just like this one here and we've made this in a google word doc and it functions a lot like a checklist and so what you would do in prepping for the show is you would just go through every single box here okay to make sure that you've crossed off all the you know dotted all the i's and crossed all the t's inside of that ros we give you the different elements or segments that every show needs to have we included like the hook which we talked about a little bit today i called it a value statement but all of these things kind of relate the hook the bumper you guys saw my bumper in the very beginning the introduction the question of the day and of course it doesn't have to be the question of the day it could be something uh, a little bit different in fact i want to show you guys a live example of a real ros in fact i'm going to show you the one that we used for today to give you a sense of you know how it all how it all works so let's go to that right now and oops i shared the wrong one i'm almost there believe me here we go it's this one right here let's see how that looks Okay. All right, good. So this is the ROS that we used today. And what I want to do is maybe see if we can move this over a little bit here. 
Okay, sorry, dead air, dead air. Over here, you see how to create a live stream show. You know, this is the title of the show today, right? Was was right here. And then we have the thumbnail for the show that we used here. That's, that first page is really just like an introductory page. We, we don't use that. In fact, we fill that in last. Over here, this is where we really start to get into the nitty gritty. So we write in the hook. And this is exactly what you heard me say today. Many live, stream struggle, many live streamers struggle to get views on their videos. And oftentimes, the people who watch log off pretty quickly. So you guys heard me say that all today in the beginning of the show. And then I play my bumper, okay, which is that Owen video. And then I have my introduction. And this is kind of where you say the value statement. So look at this. It says, hey, welcome back to Stream Like You Mean It with me, Owen Video, helping you, the video creator and entrepreneur, create more effective, uh, more engaging live stream shows. Give me an air five in the comments below. That's how we say hello. And we are broadcasting on multiple channels today. Question of the day, da, 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 da. Play the restream commercial. And then I get into the bullet points of today's show. So that's exactly how uh, the YouTube ROS works. And you can get your own copy of our YouTube ROS when you visit the link that's in the chat room right now. That's biztubeacademy.com slash ROS dash template. It's in the description box. It'll be in the chat area. Click on that link. Put your name and email. It's totally free. Put your name and email, you know, into these boxes here and then what we're going to send you is our youtube ros template and this can be used for uh, for youtube videos but it can also be used for live streaming videos and inside of this template copy that you'll get when you click on the link today i actually put some template copy some scripting copy here that will help guide you the way so you guide you along the way so you don't have to make anything up you don't have to like oh what do i say here for the hook we've already given you some some really solid scripts here, some really solid templates here. So all you have to do is kind of replace it with your company info, and um, and you'll be in a uh, you'll be in a pretty uh, a pretty good place. Okay, so that concludes our seven tips for today on all the different aspects that go into a successful live stream show. Now, are there other things that you could add to your show? Of course, there's always some salt and pepper you could add to your show, but every successful show has those features, those seven features that we talked about today. And I don't want to review them for anyone who's watching this on the replay and wants to skip ahead toward the end. Now, for those of you that are watching and um, on the replay or live, and you want to go get my ROS template, this is the link right here. So I'll keep it up for just a moment, but the link should also be in the chat area and in the description box below. You can go get the ROS right now. It's totally free. And when you get it, we actually include a video um, tutorial that will show you how to use it and some of the different things um, that uh, that we've used um, or that that you can use in that to make it more effective. So I'd like to give the rest of this time back to you to ask any questions uh, that you might have, to go over any thoughts um, that you might have, and to really just close out the show the show strong. So I want to come into the comment area. Oops, sometimes I. Uh, okay, I gave the link already. So there it is right there. And we've got a Facebook user who says, just curious, what did you do before you started live streaming for business or your profession? That is a great question. So I have been a video creator since I was about nine years old. Uh, what happened with me was I was fired from my job at the radio station. And I've been fired from every job I've ever had. Now, at this time, you know, I wasn't really raised to be entrepreneurial. So I didn't know what I was going to do. All I knew in 2008 when I got fired is that I was tired of getting fired and that I would never put myself in a position to be fired again. So I started creating videos for YouTube. And at first, these videos were sketch comedy videos. You can kind of, you can see some of them. Uh, online and I still do sketch comedy on TikTok at Owen Video. Actually, it's yeah at Owen Video. But when I started doing comedy, like the real world set, and it's like, how do I make a living with this? Right, there was no such thing as a YouTube influencer at that time. So I was kind of like friends and family, were like, yeah, it's funny, Owen, but what are you going to do with this? So 
what I began doing was making videos for business owners. And I would knock on doors, knock, knock, knock. Hey, I'll make you a video today for 20 bucks, right? It might seem cheap and it was cheap, but at that time it was a loss leader. So I, I didn't make any money on the 20 bucks. I made money when they called me back and were like, hey, I want five more videos. And so that began my career. Uh, live streaming really got big for me personally when Meerkat came out a few years ago. Blab was just hitting the scene. These are older softwares that did not you know, make it, but we were live streaming a ton and having a great time. And that's when I realized, um, that's when I realized that uh, I had a real gift for this and I should be focusing on it more. And so uh, I started live streaming like for real, for real, like four years ago. And I'll never go back. I love, I love live streaming. Uh, great question from Chris Derboven, who is saying, what is the difference between the video marketing school and the BizTube Academy? Great question. They are the same thing. They're the exact same thing. So BizTube Academy is the old name. And sometimes when we give out the link, it has the old URL, BizTube Academy. But BizTube Academy and the Video Marketing School are the same thing. And for those of you guys wondering what that is, the Video Marketing School is my private training group where you can access me in a monthly call in a private Facebook group and get access to over 100 hours of video marketing school training. Now here's here's something big, okay? If you wanna check us out at thevideomarketingschool.com, I want you to do that. Check us out at thevideomarketingschool.com, it's very affordable. But for anyone who joins as a lifetime member, we are giving away a full video creation station set with a Logitech Brio, the light, and the microphone that I showed you today. So go to the videomarketingschool.com if you wanna enroll in that. Click on the links in front of you and you can learn more about that. Okay, Robert Chapel is asking a, another great question. He says, other than when our audience is watching, when is the best time of day for live streaming? So great question. I answered this earlier, but I wanna answer it again. There are two great times to live stream. Number one is when your audience is online. Number two is whenever you can. Okay, because in this day and age, your audience is online all the time. Let's just face it. You're, you've got people in your audience watching. You've got potential buying customers and watching viewers, you know, like all the time online. There's a billion people on Facebook at any given moment, okay? So I want you to look at your schedule and go, okay, I, I can, I have the room to go live, you know, like, Mondays at 6 p.m., then just book the next, you know, 12 Mondays and you're going to stream at that time and go live at that time and see what happens. See what type of results you get, okay? Because my guess is you're going to get great results. I really believe that. And you can just continue live streaming at that time. But if not, you can change your time and you can look at a better time, okay? All right, last comment today it says, thank you, Owen. I'm glad to be a student in your video marketing school. I'm glad to have you in the video marketing school and I'm stoked to be here every single week with you guys, Mondays at 12 p.m. Pacific time for Stream Like You Mean It, where we help live streamers and entrepreneurs like you create more effective, more engaging live stream shows. It's been a pleasure meeting with you guys today. I can't wait to see you soon. This is Owen Video, and I'll see you next week.